everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Next to me is the latest resin 3D printer from the folks over at Frozen. It's the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K. It is a huge, and I mean huge, resin 3D printer, and I'm really excited to give you my full thoughts and review on this machine and how it can be a mega pain, mega slow, but also mega amazing. Frozen did send this machine over to me for review purposes, and I'm not being paid for this, and all of my thoughts are my own on this particular unit. I have provided some initial feedback to the folks over at Frozen, which I'll be discussing here with you guys in this video. So right off the bat, you'll notice that this machine is a stunning looking big resin 3D printer. It's all metal. It is a very heavy machine. I was able to lift this up onto the table inside the box and get this all unboxed myself. However, I would really stress that you use two people if possible to get it into your workspace or just move it around. It is a very, very heavy unit and you don't want to damage it. Speaking of no damage or anything like that, when it was shipped over to me, I had zero issues with that. Unboxing went really smooth and what's also great about it is that the build plate comes pre-leveled so once you get it unboxed and set up you can just start throwing in some resin and getting to printing. So let's cover a handful of the features for the Mega 8K. On the front is a front-facing USB drive, which makes it really easily accessible. Comes with an eight gig SanDisk drive as well, which is the same kind that I typically buy and use for all of my other resin 3D printers. It also has a large touchscreen interface on the front, which is really easy to use and operate. On the back of the unit is where you're gonna find the power button. It would have been great to see that on the front or the sides of the unit, just to make it a little easier to get access to. The power cable also plugs in directly into the back. Unfortunately, that cable is only about five feet long. I wish it was six or seven just to make it a little bit easier to reach outlets that aren't necessarily right next to the machine. The unit also comes with an ethernet port in the back. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to test out the capabilities of sending files directly to the machine. I don't have an ethernet cable that will stretch all the way into this space here where I can plug in and test that out. And there are also two large fans on the back of the unit, which will help keep things cool when you're printing. And surprisingly, the fans are really quiet compared to a lot of the other large resin 3D printers that are out there. It also sports the same style doors that were on the transform that are gonna open up sort of barn door style here from either side. You are gonna need a good amount of clearance so that this can fully open up. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this style just because it does take up a lot more space, especially if you have other resin 3D printers that need to sit next to the unit. Again, you need to make sure there's about a foot of clearance on either side so that you can get those doors fully open. What's great about those double doors is that it does allow you to have a lot more room to get access to the build plate and vat when you're working with the machine. The printer is also sporting a huge build volume of 330 by 185 by 400 millimeters. It gives you a ton of space to print some really large prints. You also have a really nice large vat to hold all of your resin that comes with handles and is bolted in place here with one on each side. And this is one of my gripes with the machine because those bolts I think are just a little bit too long and I feel like I'm spending, I know that wasn't very long, but it's, it does feel like it takes a good bit more effort to get those bolts in and out to make sure that the vat is nice and secured or loosened up so that you can get it out of there. It just, it takes up a little bit too much time to get those in and out. And this really large vat holds about one and a half full liter bottles of resin, which is a ton of resin that's gonna fit into that vat about one and a half of these large bottles of resin that you can fit directly in here. You can probably push it and get a full two bottles in there if you really wanted to try as well. One thing that I wish this larger vat had that some of the other resin 3D printers have are bolts that help protect the FEP sheet so that if you wanted to set the vat down on your tabletop when you're trying to clean or pour out any resin and just work with it here that the FEP sheet isn't directly sitting on the surface that you're working with. Now that we've removed the vat, you'll get a better view of the dual rails that make sure that this build plate is properly moving up and down nice and smooth. This build plate is really nice and large. It's held in place by these two bolts on top. It also has handles on both sides, so it makes it easier for you to grip and grab. You can also use the center portion here to grab onto. You'll also notice that there's holes throughout the build plate, which are gonna help reduce some of the suction and peeling forces that come with printing on these larger resin machines. It's also one of my biggest pain points with using this particular printer because anytime that you have failed prints, 
you're gonna be dealing with a very hard time of removing cured resin from inside those holes. And when I ended up having those issues, I ended up using an Allen wrench and going from the top and poking the holes clear, which was a oh so fun process that took about 30 to 40 minutes to actually clean up because I just couldn't use a paint scraper here to scrape all of the resin free because they were stuck inside those holes. You're also gonna have resin that is pooling inside those holes anytime that you have prints that are properly sticking to the build plate. So when you remove it and then go to remove your prints, you're gonna get all of the excess resin pooling and pouring out of that. Also, you'll notice that the build plate is flat. So as you're printing with this machine, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're using a plastic scraper or spatula or squeegee to actually clean off the top of the vat. One other pain point with all the perforated holes is here you'll even see I've cleaned this multiple times. I still have resin oozing out of those holes. It's a really hard process to get that fully cleaned out, especially if you're looking to swap out resin colors from one to another, you're gonna have a nightmare of a time getting this fully clean so that you don't contaminate one resin with another resin color. But I will say that when things are printing properly, prints really do stick well to the perforated hole build plate. All right, so let's talk about some of the prints that I was able to get off of this machine. And I'm happy to say that despite some of the things that I've called out about this unit so far, it's printing amazing and I'm loving the prints that I'm getting off of this unit here. So the first thing I wanted from printed was one of these Amerilab test prints here. I didn't print the Rook that came on the machine. I probably should have, but I just skipped over that. Uh, went with one of the test prints because I know those print really fast, typically. Uh, yeah, with the default settings that are provided with the machine for their resins, which by the way, you're gonna be using Cheetu Box and I'll talk about that here in a little bit here but uh, they have tons of resin profiles that come with this unit, which was great to see. And over on Frozen's website, they have an updated site where they're gonna be continuing to refine and tweak the settings for those resins as they can basically improve on them. So I went with those and it was a long print. I think it was almost like a two hour print for that little Amerilabs test print, which is normally like 30 minutes, 40 minutes at the most. So I was a little shocked by that at 0.05 millimeter layer height. But since that printed just fine, I went off and decided to load up the build plate with as many Loot Studios files from their latest campaign Valhalla series as I could. I printed one of their standard scale miniatures and then the larger version of it, this drummer guy here, turned out unbelievable. The details on this are just Again, stunning. This was a 14 hour and 14 minute print here for the full build plate. Again, not that high and I thought it printed relatively slow. I thought it would have printed a good bit faster because of that mono screen display but apparently that's not the case. Next, I really wanted to test out what kind of details I could get off of this machine. So I went and printed this highly detailed print from Fotis Mint off of his Patreon. This is Dane Ironfoot. The details on this print look insane off of this machine. I am extremely excited and happy to see how well the details showed up off of this print. On the same build plate, I printed this armored Deadpool face mask from Nico Industries, which also happens to be the sponsor for today's video. If you're interested in cosplay items for 3D printing, NicoIndustries.com is the place to be for that. Printing this Iron Man Deadpool helmet here, which is gonna be a really fun project. I printed the Shang-Chi rings here, so if you're interested in those, you'll find that. He also has an amazing Patreon as well, where you can get all sorts of crazy files. If you're part of his Patreon, you can also get access to resell prints of those files, which is crazy cool. And not to mention over on NicoIndustries.com, if you design your own files, you can sell them directly on his marketplace as well. If you're interested in more information about Nico's files and the things that he sells over there, you'll find links down below. A huge thank you to Nico for sponsoring today's video. And it's just a perfect fit for me because I love printing all of these cosplay related things. This looks spectacular. I was so incredibly pleased to see how well this turned out because it's a relatively smooth and flat surface print. I thought for sure we were gonna see lots of stepping and layer lines throughout the print process here and it turned out unbelievable. This literally is paint ready other than I need to sand down the eye sockets slightly and that's about it. This was a 24 hour and I think 30 minute print on this machine which isn't Horrible, but again, not entirely 
fast either. <laughs> I would have thought this would have printed much faster on this particular machine with that mono screen. So I reached back out to Nico and I said, hey, I need something that I can print that would be really cool to show off. So I printed the Shang-Chi 10 rings here on the Mega 8K. This thing is a cosplayer's dream when it comes to resin 3D printing. I was able to fit all 10 rings on the build plate and print those. Unfortunately, this is where I started tweaking the resin settings and trying to see if I could get it to improve the print speed with this. And that's where I ended up running into some of the issues here. So this was a nine hour print and I ended up having a good number of those that failed and needed to reprint them. The details still came out really nicely here. However, I just ended up having prints that broke free or didn't fully print and just were stuck in the vat. This is where I started running into a lot of the cleanup issues and prints getting stuck in the vat. It was just one of those nightmare situations that you don't want to be in. So I tweaked the settings again and I ended up printing 150 of those Shang-Chi rings, much smaller in scale. I really wanted to just test out printing all on that build plate to see how it would work. And again, I ended up running into a handful of print failures there, but for the most part, it all printed successfully. And that was a three hour print here on the Mega 8K with those revised settings. So then I took the original settings that were provided with the frozen machine and reprinted a handful of those rings and it came out at a six hour print time and all of those worked perfectly. And finally, one of the coolest things that I think I've ever resin 3D printed, it is a huge Magneto statue. This is from XM 3D over on their Patreon, and I am so utterly impressed with this 3D print. All the body pieces were printed in 14 hours and 20 minutes, and then the cape was printed in nine hours and 20 minutes in two separate pieces. This was printed using their default profile, and I still ended up running into a few print failures, and it might have been due to me not properly hollowing or adding supports to a few of the pieces were just some of the things ended up failing along the way. But this is a fantastic sculpture. It has swappable heads as well. Uh, also underneath the helmet, there are swappable faces. So you can load up one that has like a mouth closed versus open versus eyes hollow. So if you wanted to add LEDs into the statue, there's also a smaller base versus a larger sentinel head base that's being ripped in half. Chose to print the smaller in here just because I was running out of resin for this particular video. I do need to reprint the cape just because of some of the issues that I was seeing with the supports and it didn't print properly so it's not sitting on the body properly. But outside of that, this thing looks amazing. I'm extremely happy with the details that I'm seeing off of this print. So one thing I haven't talked about is the pricing of the unit. And it currently, as I've recorded this video, the pricing on their website is $1,450. Looks like it's a sale price that they're running here. I do know that this was a unit that was sent out to me early. However, there were people that have already pre-ordered that have started receiving their units because folks over on the Frozen Facebook group have been posting their prints that they've been getting off of the machine. Frozen also put together a special for all of you watching this specific video. There is an Uncle Jesse special that they put together. It's a I feel like the first time I've seen that here and I was cracking up the first time I loaded up their website uh, and saw the picture there, it was, I thought it was very entertaining, was it's $1,500 for the unit, so slightly more expensive than the deal that they're offering right now. However, you get three bottles of resin as well as two additional NFEP sheets for the vat. If you buy the standard edition of the printer, I don't believe you're getting any additional FEP sheets as well as no resin with the machine. So those are all additional things that you'd have to buy on top of the machine itself. There is a note on there that also says that units pre-ordered with this special are more than likely gonna be shipping out in some time in November of this year. One thing that I wanna make sure that you're aware of is that if you pick up the Mega 8K today, you're gonna to be locked into using Cheetubox Basic, which is the free version of Cheetubox or Cheetubox Pro, which is a $170 annual subscription. You can't use any other slicers currently to generate the files that are gonna print on this machine. That's the same thing that's happening with lots of other brand new resin 3D printers that are using the Cheetu based board. Hopefully that will be changing at some point here in the near future, but as of right now, you're locked into either the free or the pro version of that software. More than likely you'll be hearing the same sort of thing from other content creators that are looking at other resin 3D printers that have Chitu based boards. They're all locked to either Chitu Box Basic or Pro currently. That's supposed to change in the future, but it's a wait and see how this thing actually pans out at this point in time. 
And while those default settings I thought were really slow when it came to printing, the print results were all amazing. Basically everything that I was getting off of this machine turned out great other than when I started tinkering with the settings and started seeing a lot more failures than wins on this particular machine. I'll be continuing to tinker with this to see if I can find a happy medium between their default settings and then pushing the limits of how fast it can print so that there's a good balance between print quality and print time management on this particular machine. But the good news is lots of these units are already heading out to folks that have pre-ordered, so there's gonna be more people tinkering with this and playing around with different resins to help build up profile options. So would I recommend you picking up the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K? Yeah, if you're in the market for a really large resin 3D printer, it doesn't get much better than this right here. It has a mono screen display. While it doesn't print entirely fast, the print results are amazing on this machine. And again, my pain points were really around that build plate. And when you have failed prints, the resin getting stuck in those perforated holes in the build plate. That can all really be mitigated if you're not monkeying with the settings too much or hopefully your prints aren't failing like mine were. This machine is able to make some really large resin 3D props as well as some things like these statues here that would typically cost you hundreds of dollars for a kit like this. You're able to make yourself on a machine this size in pretty much one print, which is amazing. Or in less than 24 hours, I was able to print this entire statue you crazy. So if you're interested in the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K, I'll have links down below. But thanks so much to Frozen for sending this along. Thanks to Nico for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to check out his site. Also, a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Again, couldn't do this without your help. As soon as I have a better profile dialed in for this machine, I'll be sure to be sharing that with all my Patreon supporters. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.